Mm. Yeah, so, but the, the service we do by engaging as senses in the service of Krishna, the master, Lord of the senses, Vishikesh, there's an accompanying mood that comes with it. It's not just mindless, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. So the mood that Maharaj is specifically speaking about, the um, the underlying mood of a practitioner of bhakti following in the uh, footsteps or the inspiration of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is was that mood, a specific mood that we're chanting Hare Krishna in? Separation. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Ripalamba, otherwise a.k.a. Ripalamba. Virahara Bhav, it's called as well, you know. So, Marge explained it in quite simple terms. He explained the, the different stages from Shraddha, you know, that verse from Nectar of Devotion. Shraddha, um, what comes next? Faith, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajan Kriya, Anatha Nivriti, Shanagati, isn't it? Nishta, not Nishta. Ruchi. Shakti, Pava, Prema. Yeah. So he actually reminded us that each of these different stages, okay, for us in the beginning ones, covering through Bhajan Kriya and taking up Bhakti, then there is an emotion that actually goes with it. So it just stands to reason then, that as we as devotees advance through at different stages, then actually the emotional part becomes the more sig significant in a devotee's devotional de uh, development. So, but specifically the mood that we want to hear about and and so we can cultivate it is the mood of Ripalumba. Yeah. Do you remember I said something about chanting last week as well? I, I, I left it on a specific point. That each time, that, that the reason we chant Hare Krishna is because, or we should be because we're feeling... Separation from, yeah, separation from Krishna. So even, sat, you know, okay, so <coughs> we can relate to it because... Hopefully, the reason why we pick up our beads is because because we want to be with Krishna. You know, we've had enough. Okay, let the world stop for a couple of hours, <laughs> and let me just be with Krishna. Okay, let me not be disturbed. Let me try and focus my mind on hearing the sound of the Maha Mantra. Why? Because we want to be with Krishna. Yeah. So this is the development of Vipalamba. All right, so that's the basic context as far as I can recall from last week's reading. So we'll pick it up here. Um, Mother Chandravali, you have the book, uh, 259. And um, <clears throat> from Rupa Goswami, I think. Yeah, that's it. Rupa Goswami described. Okay, Nama Om Vishnu Bade, Krishna Mastai Bhutale, Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swam Tanamane. Namaste, Sarasati Devi, Gaurabhi, Vachalini, Nivasisha, Sunyavadi, Pratara, Satanini, Jai Sri Krishna, Jai Dhanakura, Gaurabhi, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Hare Hare. Sorry, my microphone was coming in and out there. Okay, let's see where we go in this evening's reading. Mm -hmm. like to read more? Rupa Goswami describes this state of love in separation as follows. When the lover and the beloved meet, they are called yukta, connected. Previous yeah. to this, their meeting, they are called a yukta, not connected. Whether connected or not connected, the aesthetic emotion arising due to not being able to embrace and kiss each other as desired is called vipralamba. This vipralamba helps nourish emotions at the time of meeting. Yes, so I just look where that's from. Let's have a quick look. Um, in the... That's from Utvala Nilamani. 
in a chapter called Vipalamba Prakarana. So Udvala Nilamani is the book that comes after Nectar of Devotion. Yeah. Nectar of Devotion gives a summary at the end of the different relationships with Krishna. And Udvala Nilamani specifically speaks about all the details of Ma of Madhuya Ras. So for your information, that's Udvala Nilamani. Okay. The conditioned mind cannot comp comprehend how one can be simultaneously unhappy and happy. But that mm. is the transcendental real reality of love for Krishna. Like the two sides of a golden coin, which though em embossed differently, are embossed, of, that's embossed, yeah. embossed, embossed differently, are of equal value. Prema has two aesthetic features, meeting and separation. Citing a conversation between Punamasti and Nandimukhi, Chaitama Prabhu glorified this inconceivable wonder as follows. My dear beautiful friend, if one developed love of God, love of Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj, all the bitter and sweet influences of this love will manifest in one's heart. Such love of God acts in two ways. The poisonous effect of love of God defeats the severe Sever. And severe, yeah, that's correct. Severe and fresh yes, poison. And fresh poison of the serpent. Yet there is simultaneously transcendental bliss, which pours down and defeats the pride of nectar and diminishes its value. In other words, love of Krishna is so powerful that it simultaneously defeats the poisonous effect of a snake, as well as the happiness derived from pouring nectar on one's head. It is perceived as doubly effective, simultaneously poisonous and nectarine. All right, that's from, um, well, I've got the page open with the index. That's from uh, the Sri Vidagdam Hadava. That's a play written by Rupa Goswami. Two plays, one is the Lalita Madhava, and the other one is the, the, the Vidagdam Hadava. It's the one right. that the Obama comes in the dream. Yeah, that's, that's the one, yeah. So we all okay, everyone being described too difficult for us to uh, really comprehend fully, but it sounds really it's wonderfully described here by Rupa Goswami. Mm. It's like nectar and poison at the same time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so in other words, um, separation. Uh, is another flavor of, or the pain of separation, is another flavor of ecstasy, of of love. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's a different. So in other words, um, the relationship between Krishna, especially here, or being described, the relationship with Krishna, it, it is not static. You know, it's full of emotions. Yeah, with rising and falling, all these different intense emotions. Two basic ones is meeting with Krishna and being separated from him. Mm -hmm. And as a, as a and Rupa Goswami describes to a large degree, all the different lots of emotions experienced in relationship to Krishna. So remember, we read that in the Nectar of Devotion some, some time ago. So, yes, it is not all one. Okay, <laughs> the so spiritual realm God. and perfection is full of emotion. It is not void in any way, shape, or form. Feeling of sadness is not like the material sadness, is it? You know. No, no. I said it's it's another. Yeah, I, it's another flavor of the ecstasy of a of a love, yeah. Yeah, it's got it has nothing to do whatsoever with the lamentation, the dukkha, the dukkha of the materialist, sukha dukkha, yeah. 
because they are lamenting because they cannot because they cannot interact with the sense objects for one reason or another. <laughs> so they're lamenting, but it is not. Yeah, it's not the same. One day we will understand it. Yeah, I'm sure as they're highlighting, you know, we might have to some degree. We have some. Hopefully, we to some degree we're feeling separation from Krishna, but we're feeling like uh, underlying overall joy because we're practicing bhakti but it's accompanied with feelings of sometimes of um how can we describe it of um melancholy melancholy you heard of that word melancholy yeah sometimes we feel it so sometimes we go through there may be points in our krishna consciousness where we're feeling not much taste for the holy name you know, we're not feeling something which we experienced perhaps last year or the year before, you know. We seem to be uh, kind of running on the spot. You know, we may have these, and that's uh, that's all part of spiritual life. There's going to be, I think, such an Maharaj calls it, um, uh, there's a Christian, he was referring to a Christian, like, conversation, Um the quietness of God. You understand? The quietness of God. So it means you get persons who dedicate themselves to God. They may become, you know, monks. They become renunciates. They give their whole life in intense prayer. But they feel no specific indication that God is pleased with them. So they feel in a kind of limbo. And uh, but that's all I'm reading about that in Nath Pari Home, this book here as well. But that's all part of feeling that's the Krishna training us up <laughs> to feeling to feel that we want him. Because if you're feeling separation from Krishna, that means you that means you want him. If you don't feel separation, it means you don't want him. <laughs> if you're feeling it, it means you want him. Yeah, so yeah, so I'm sure we've experienced that and uh, looking at devotees here, you've all been practicing 10 years plus 15, 20 years, 25 years and more. So I'm sure you've felt sometimes that Krishna may be un may be difficult, yeah. You may feel like an absence of Krishna in our lives, you know. But still, we are joyful compared to a materialistic person. Hopefully. Anyway, I'm trying to just explain something which um, I can't claim to have full realization or knowledge of. <laughs> Anyone on that? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. I, uh, I was just thinking, Prabhu, when he said, hopefully, we are joyfully than the materialist person yeah. uh, that happens <laughs> uh, not not really until unless you understand whatever situation is arranged for your own purification by the Lord until unless you come you really understand that uh, I don't know I'm talking about myself until unless you really get into that and you then <laughs> I can't say that I'm happier than the materialist person. Uh, yeah. Because if you if you see Lord's, if you think, okay, if you always see Lord's hand, if you if you are really in Krishna consciousness, as Sri Rapopad said, uh, you have to be, if you are in real Krishna consciousness, then you can be uh, undisturbed with whatever adverse situation. And he specifically said real Krishna consciousness. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I take that on. I don't think that's incorrect. Um, but um, incorrect? I'm just trying, no, I, no, I don't think it's incorrect. I mean, I, yeah, I, okay. I, I agree with what yeah. you're saying. I was just highlighting the point that um, we probably do not really, you know, probably compared to a materialist or someone who has no concept of Krishna, no concept of, of the soul is leading a gross materialistic life and these situations that they have to face, you know, 
his cause is yeah quite intense uh, depression but and and anxiety but it's not the same for for a devotee because we always have as you mentioned krishna consciousness to fall back on so in that sense we kind of even though we're feeling separation from krishna at least we're better situated you know perhaps we're expanding this out a bit too much <laughs> we're kind of getting quite subtle but i'm just trying to create a picture that feeling separation i'm sure we've we all have felt it to one degree or or another and i was just trying to highlight that when you're you know the fact that you want to chant your rounds you feel you want it and and you can't do without it that's because you want krishna and you can't deal without him and you can't live without him you know so that's separation yeah yeah you're right because yeah. you want to like okay one more a better round one more a better round you know yeah yeah it's going into one more better round you know because Krishna is non different from his name, so that's how he's manifest. So that's how we associate with Krishna. Mm. By by chanting his name, then we have association with him. So all right, let's read on a bit more, shall we? Unless there's any other comments upon that. We have a dedicated um Sankal Kamudi readers here. Hare Krishna. Listeners. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Okay, on the occasions Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited Lord Jagannath's temple in Puri, he would be overwhelmed with the happiness of meeting. In the ecstasy of love, he would think he was Srimati Radharani's, he, he, he would think he was Srimati Radharani meeting Krishna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. The Lord would stand at the entrance to the mm -hmm. temple by the Garuda Stamba, and his tears of joy would create and fill a depression in the stone floor. When Jagannath's Asti ceremony was over and the doors at the deity room closed, Lord Chaitanya would return to his residence, overcome by the agony of separation from his beloved. In the mood of this short gopi, he would mark the ground with his fingers and express his sorrow to confidants like Swarup Damada. Where is Vrindavan? Where is Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj? Where is that youth who plays the flute with such skill? Throughout his stay at Jagannath Puri, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would exhibit the twofold aspects of love of God. And in his final years, the Lord became mostly Im immersed in the mood of separation, displaying transcendental symptoms that remain unknown to even the Vedas. Yes, yeah, so Jagannath Puri is known for that mood, for the mood of Ripalamba. So some devotees go there specifically to do bhajan in, in Puri to meditate upon this mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, especially at the Gambira, where he was absorbed in, in inconceivable, deep mellows of feeling separation in the mood of Radharani from Krishna. So some devotees will specifically go there in order to uh, do bhajan in that place, you know. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. So next time we go to Jagannath Puri, you can meditate on this. This is a place of Ripalamba Bhav. It's also the place of Eat Mahabhushadam. <laughs> it's also the place of Ripalamba Bhav. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice place. They've done it, done it up so nicely, you know. Yeah. Even uh, the room that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, was stayed. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, yeah. The Gambira. <clears throat> Okay. Devotees may wonder why, when transcendental things are ever fresh, is there a need for separation in the first place? Why is meeting not eternal? 
Yeah, that's a good question. Mm. To answer the reason the wonders of Vipralamba and the importance of cultivating it during sadhana bhakti. In short, even in the realm of eternity, separation makes meeting more enjoyable. Similarly, for the sadhaka, separation brings with it a spiritual bliss that in time transforms into the love which qualifies him to meet Krishna. Now for a little more detail. Cinnam, cinnams? Cinnamons, I think. Cinnamon, cinnamon stick. <laughs> cinnamon stick Synonyms. Synonyms of Ripralamba and are Viraha and Viyoga. Well, that's, so that's, that means different names for the same thing, yeah? Yeah, same thing, different. Okay. Their respective meaning are parting, separation. And this junction, let us look at just the etymology. etymology. Yeah. So that's the word. So we're going to, he's going to analyze the word of Ripper Lumber. Okay. The verb, verbal root, love, means to obtain or to meet. And the corresponding noun, lumber, is obtaining or meeting. The prefix pra adds an implicit emphasis to the Sanskrit, although the translation to both lamba and pralamba are the same. However, with the leading suffix vi, the meaning takes a contrary direction, making the word vipralamba mean loss or separation. Interestingly, pralab and vipralab also mean to deceive. Thus, vipralamba also means dece deception. deception. Hmm. From the, this simple analysis, readers can understand that vipralamba is that state in which people, or in the case of loving relationship, lovers are separated or cheated of each other's association. That separation invokes many emotions, and those two are implicit in the meaning of Ripralamba. The nature of transcendental love is such that when lovers of any mellow are un un unable to fulfill their desires to meet, their mutual love increases. The example is given that when red cloth is placed in red dye, it becomes it becomes all that much redder. Okay. Similarly, because Vipralamba is another facet of love, when a devotee is immersed in it, his love becomes greater, as does his enjoyment when meeting the beloved. While far from being a transcendentalist, the French author, Franz, Franz, mm -hmm. De la... De la <laughs> nicely expressed, expressed emotions that represented certain aspects of Vipralamba. He wrote, absence and right. yeah. extinguishes small passions and increases great ones, as the wind will blow out a candle and fan the fan of fire. Unquote. Unquote, yes. The truth of the matter is that without Vipralamba, the enjoyment of Samboga would be strifled and not fully appreciated. Separation is like a magnifying glass that makes the bliss of meeting a million times greater. And the ecstasy of meeting is like a tidal wave that carries on into separation, making Vipralamba just another form of aesthetic bliss. Okay, we're understanding something. Nicely explained. Okay. More details have been given. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any comments or questions? If not, we can continue reading. Do you want to read next? Okay, we've just got a couple of pages left in this chapter. Let's see. This is how there is happiness in separation. Yeah. 
The difference between the two is how happiness is tasted and displayed. In the meeting, the bliss within is, is externally evident by corresponding symptoms, such as smiling and laughter. But in separation, the bliss within is externally evident by contrary symptoms, such as crying and moroseness. All right. So the bliss within, so there's bliss within, but in separation, its symptoms manifest as crying and moroseness. As the depths of love increase with the hierarchy of mellows, so does, so too does Vipalamba become increasingly tasty, finding its pinnacle in Madhuya Rasa. Indeed, love in separation is especially relishable in the unwedded conjugal love between Krishna and the young damsels of Raj. In the form of Chaitanya Mahabhu, Krishna was able to relish the various tastes of separation that reached a pinnacle in, <coughs> in wild expressions of madness, like those displayed by Radha, by Radha after Krishna departed for Mathura. Krishna himself makes countless arrangements to be separated from his associates. He does this for two reasons. One is that he is thus able to taste the bliss of separation that is due to the object of a devotee's love. And the other is that he is curious to observe the behavior of a devotee in separation. By watching and hearing his devotee's expressions, Krishna enjoys the devotee's emotions through the, ancient, through the agency of Tatpava in a way that the Sadak develops his own feelings through the same agency by hearing of the separation of Krishna and his associates, and so Krishna enjoys. Right, so this Tatpava, this is where, in prox for example, um, if you may read the prayers of Nautam Das Thakur or sing the bhajans of Nautam or Bhakti Thakur, for instance, um, Jeho Nila Prema Dana Karuna Pacho. So that's a song of separation. That's a song of lamentation in separation. So if you associate with that bhajan or, or you hear that bhajan, you will that the mood which is expressed, you will to some degree or another experience yourself. That's called tat bhava. We're coming in close proximity to an emotion expressed through prayer or bhajan, say for example, then you also get an insight into that mood. Yeah, and that's called tat bhava. That's why it's good to sing the songs. You know, we never sing enough, I don't think. A time, you know, the songs of Nautam and Bhakti Nautako. So that's so Krishna enjoys the devotees' em, emotions through the agency of Tat Bhava. So the emotions that the devotee is feeling from Krishna is feeling in the emotions of love, which is manifest from separation. Krishna likes to experience that. In his devotee. Tat Bhava. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because when you sing, like you were saying, this bhajan, when you start singing, yeah. you know, where the the lines are, Kahamera Swarup Rupa Raguna, you know, so like yeah. that feel, yeah. Yeah. So feel that. Yeah. Then you share in those emotions of which that song was 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 composed. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's called Tat Bhava. Maharaj mentions elsewhere that that you know, if you experience it there and you kind of you have that experience, then you take it with you and you remember that. And you could chant in that mood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the bhava, and, and you develop that mood. Bhava. Of course we yeah, this is, uh, it's not done cheaply. It shouldn't be, a, these things are, we're not, we don't want to become 
Sir Hodges, but this is the proper scientific development of real spiritual emotions that Maharaj is explaining, you know? Yeah, so those yeah. bhajans, separation bhajans, as you sing, you feel separation, that emotions, that feeling, emotions, you can take in your chanting. Yeah, yeah, you can. Well, you can. Tadpava, it's called Tadpava. Ah. Okay. Someone may think that Krishna is cruel to put his devotees in a situation against the devotee's liking. Yeah, this book, if you want to read about this, this book, Napariham, goes into great detail. It uh, highlights uh, the gopis' feelings of dejection and accusing Krishna of not caring for them when he left the Ras dance, you know, and that whole conversation. That's called, that's not part of your home. Which means I cannot repay you. All right. Okay. But the fact is that Krishna is doing his devotee a great favor by hiding from his lover. Krishna is submerging his devotee in the ocean of nectar, a special bliss that a special bliss the devotee could never taste in his association. How inconceivable. For the reasons mentioned above, at the height of his loving exchanges with the gopis, Krishna hides from them. And then later, he even abandons Sri Mati Radharani. We all know that. Past time, we just mentioned it. For the same reasons, Krishna hides in the cave from the Kauha boys, and for the same reasons, he leaves Vrindavan and gives his eternal associates the experience of leading their lives without him. While the pastimes of separation know no limit, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu characterizes the types of separation into four. All right, All right. so these are interesting. So, Gripalamba, Chato Vidda, Purva Raga, Mana Pavakshakya, Ara Prema Vai. Prema Vaichitya Akyana. Quote, Vipalamba has four divisions. Purva Raga, separation before meeting. Yep. So Radharani, before she met Krishna, she would hear the flute playing, she would hear about Krishna, she would see pictures of Krishna, painted by Vishaka or Lalita, and she would feel great separation from him, a great desire to actually meet. But that was before they had actually met. So it's called poor Virag, separation before meeting. And this will be a bit of a question. Um, there's one of Krishna's queens which is celebrated for this poor Virag. Before she actually personally met Krishna, she was feeling so much separation from him. Name that queen. Rukmini? Yeah, Rukmini. Yeah, correct. And her prayers are known for this Purva Rag. Great feelings of love and desire to meet Krishna and to be with Krishna. You know, and, and she never met him. She just heard about him from Narada Muni and you know, etc. That's called Purva Rag. Yeah. And then the other one is Man. Separation caused by Peak, P I Q U E. And we all know we've heard that one, yeah? So Radharani takes on a huff. Yeah, I was just doing research. One, uh, yeah, um, one time Radharani, she's waiting to meet Krishna in the Pacific Kunja. And as expected, time comes. She's waiting, she's waiting. I'm sure we may have experienced that when you're waiting for someone. And they're a minute late, five minutes late, 10 minutes late, 20 minutes late, 15 minutes late, half an hour late, one hour late. So this happened. You can imagine how much Radharani is uh, desiring to be with Krishna. So much. And they arranged to meet at Pacific Kundra, Pacific time. Krishna didn't come. One hour, all through the night, she was pacing up and down. Every sound she heard. In the forest, she thought it was Krishna. Every sound she heard, she got excited and expecting Krishna. You know, it was sapphire blue to come, and, but it wasn't to be. And then just Krishna typically, just as 
at the break of dawn, Krishna appeared on the scene. And first she, first she was ecstatic. She was overcome with emotion that finally Krishna's here. But then she looked at him and he looked quite tired. It looked like he'd been enjoying with another gopi somewhere else. So she became enraged, <laughs> enraged with peak, with, with man. And she had Lalita forcibly throw him out of the kundra. And she was so angry that she, that because she's got black hair, there was mirrors in the kundra. She threw all the mirrors out because it reminded her of sham because she saw her hair. And she was in a res she was she was in a resolute huff. She wanted nothing to do with him ever again. <laughs> in her mood, her man, I don't want to see him ever again. Get him out of here. <laughs> And she said more words than that, but I'm just giving the essence of it. And then um, I just and this, this, I just read it recently, actually. Um, then it happened to be that one, uh, yeah. Then from the back of the Kundra, yeah, she threw Krishna out. There was there was peacock feathers decorating Kundra as well. She threw all the peacock feathers out. She threw everything out. She threw him out, and she slammed the door of the Kundra, and it was raining outside. And Krishna was there looking really pitiful, you know, raining and, you know. <laughs> so then at the back of the Gunja, this snake crawls out and lifts itself up to head height and then hisses towards Radharani. And then she fright, and then she jumps up in a fright. She opens the door and she runs to Krishna. And she throws herself on Krishna's arms and Krishna's very happy with the snake. His, and he gives all blessings to the snake. So actually, dear, there's one, yeah, in this book, Nap, uh, Napariham, the snake tells his story, how he played a role in allowing Radha and Krishna to uh, get together again after Radharani was in a man. You know, I'm sure you've heard these type of stories before. So that's man. All right. Separation caused by peak. Yeah. Provides uh, separation by distance, either short or long. So when, for instance, when, yeah, when Krishna is at home and Radharani is at home, then that's short. Then when Krishna goes to Mathura, and prema vai prema vai chitja, this is apprehension of separation even while in Krishna's company. So there's another elaborate story I want to tell just in brief, where Krishna and Radha they're together, they're exchanging nice words of love and um and um this bee comes in the bee is called madhu and she this bee disturbs radharani madhu mongol comes in he shoes the bee away and he, he says okay it's okay madhu has gone and because madhu is another name for krishna so when that sound vibration entered radharani's ear it had a poisonous effect and it made her blind more or less, you know, intense emotion. Just hearing that sound vibration, Madhu has gone. She thought Krishna had gone. And in her ecstasy, his voice, he was kind of laughing in wonderment at her mood. It sounded like at a distance. So she was actually with Krishna, sitting next to him, and she thought that he wasn't there. So that's called Prema Vai, Prema Vai Chitta. Anyway, Hare Krishna. Uh -huh. Unquote. There are various kinds of meeting that correspond to each type of separation. The joy of meeting blossoms to fullness and perfection after an extended separation, as when the Rajvasis and Krishna met at Kurukshetra. All right, you can imagine the feelings there. This is known as Suturya Pavesha Anantara. So those who would fault Krishna for painting, for painting his devotees, Narada comes to his defense and explains, no, by leaving his devotees, Krishna is giving them the greatest pleasure. To Gopakumar, the great sage says, quote, this way of acting, I think, just befits the most generous, the most magnanimous person, for he presents to his dear most friends the most desirable object, the most really, the 
the most rarely obtained. Unquote. Once in Navadweep, Lord Ramachandra informed Sita Devi that Navadweep would be the place of his appearance in Kali Yuga. Hearing about Goranga, the goddess inquired, so quote, Oh, lotus eyed one, why will you make your mother cry? Why, why will you give up your wife and take sannyas? What happiness is there in giving such sorrow to your mother and wife? Sri Ram replied, Oh, dear one, you know everything, but you are acting in this way just to teach living entities. Listen, Sita. My devotees relish Prema Bhakti in two ways. In union with me, they enjoy Sambhoga. And in separation from me, they enjoy Vipalamba. My eternal associates desire some Samboga, but I mercifully give them Vipalamba. Why? The devotees know that distress due to separation from me is actually the topmost bliss. And after separation, when, when union occurs, they feel happiness so much greater than before, a million times multiplied. That is why I separate from those I love the most. Unquote. Fear from being separated from her Lord made Sita Devi silent. But within, she was godly curious about the excessive bliss that could be tasted in separation. Knowing his beloved's mind, Lord Ramachandra silently vowed that he would make Sita taste the bliss of Ripalamba. And so we know what happens then. Yes, yeah, so he arranged for a Ravan to kidnap her in Panchavati Forest. The transcendental mysteries surrounding meeting and separation are endless. No doubt to see Krishna with one's eyes is the fruit of bhakti and the bestowal of a mercy and joy that cannot be had by seeing him within one's heart. Kadama Muni and Palab Maharaj are evidence of this. And the Darshan of Krishna is the true reward of sadhana, as it alone destroys all illusion and enables Prema to prosper. But if seeing Krishna brings such transcendental delight, what could be said of gaining his eternal association, in which a devotee constantly delights in the rolling waves of the ocean of bliss? And while Krishna, I just read. I just finished this chapter, just over one page, so I just read without commenting. And, then, um, and while Krishna's associates abhorred the fault, what to speak of the mention of separation from him, within their hearts they are eager for the special bliss that only separation brings. Knowing his devotees and eager to share this singular rapture with them, Krishna makes arrangements to fulfill their mutual desire, all the while lamenting the loss of their company. Love for Krishna is the treasure chest of divine bliss, while loving separation is the crown jewel of all ecstasies. Although Ripalamba appears to be very the very antithesis for which the sadhaka struggles, it is the innate, it is the innate and eternal facet of prema, and of Samboga. Gaudiya Vaishnava was other guardians of this confidential form of worship, a gift that was bestowed upon them by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Indeed, the worship of Krishna in separation is the only way in which a devotee can find his way out of the teeming jungle of Kali. There is no other way. All right? Indeed, the worship of Krishna in separation is the only way which a devotee can find his way out of the teeming jungle of Kali. There is no other way. After attaining the shelter of the holy name, when the sadhaka's feelings of separation are extreme, he becomes truly qualified to meet Krishna. Calling upon the Lord with plentive cries is the only way to catch Krishna's attention and move his heart. And when Krishna's heart echoes with the distressed calls of his devotee, only then does he make his appearance. This is the way of Bhava Seva. We now summarize the description of Ripalamba and its relation to meeting Krishna with Srila Prabhupada's own words. Quote, the spontaneous attraction of Krishna for his dearest parts and parcels generates an enthusiasm 
that obliges Sri Krishna and the gopis to meet together to celebrate the transcendental enthusiasm. There is need of a sentiment of separation between the lover and, and beloved. In the condition of material tribulation, no one wants the pangs of separation, but in the transcendental, but in the transcendental form, the very same separation, being absolute in nature, strengthens the ties of love and enhances desire of the lover and beloved to meet. The period of separation evaluated transcendentally is more relishable than the actual meeting, which lacks the feeling of increasing anticipation because the lover and beloved are both present. All right, that's from Chachanya Tratamrita Adilila, chapter 4, text 31. Hare Krishna, Hare Om Tatsa. Yeah, that finishes chapter 33. Any thoughts or questions on this? Any comments? Something I was going to say, I forgot. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a mistake. Um, we will go through periods where we're feeling an absence of Krishna. Now, the mistake is for as conditioned souls that when we would feel times of distress before we took up Krishna consciousness, we would take shelter of something material. So sometimes when, when devotees are down, they may not be they may be feeling a bit melancholy. <laughs> they may, if they're not advanced enough, they may go, they may take shelter of material things rather than Krishna. I know one you know, friend of mine, he he was going through that. He was going through a lot of stress, you know, a lot of stress in his devotional service. But then he would take shelter of, you know, I won't explain. But he he wasn't Krishna. He was he wasn't taking shelter of Krishna. He was trying to find relief in the same things he felt relief before before he take before he took the Krishna consciousness. But the point here is if we're feeling a little bit down, a little bit not infused, pick up your beads, take shelter of Krishna. Read about Krishna, hear about Krishna, you know. That's what that's yeah, Ravan. Yeah. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Yeah, chance some extra rounds. Rather than do some what rather than watch something nonsense or do something nonsense. Chance some more rounds. Yeah. Attend the um Sangha on online Sangha. <laughs> All right. So the next chapter, I'll let Chandravali read on. We've got 10 minutes is um Goranga and Ripalamba Seva. How can we speak about Ripalamba without Spending some time specifically speaking about Goranga. Okay. Yeah. Goranga, Goranga, Goranga. Quite a lengthy purple as well. Uh, quite a lengthy chapter. Yeah, we have that. We have Gora, Gora, Gora all day. Yeah. Okay, you can continue. Okay. Chapter, chapter 34. Goranga and Goranga. It would be impossible to cultivate Nam Sankitan in the mood of Vipralamba without giving due respect to the personification and embodiment of separation, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya's associate and his subsequent followers up to our Srila Prabhupada have revealed the identity of Sri Gauranga as Krishna himself. Yet with one voice they emphasize the difference between the mood and pastimes of these two forms of Godhead. Krishna and Gora are undeniably one and the same person. In Vrindavan, Blackish Krishna reveals in his pastime of love 
and he is the abode of sweetness and the object of affection for his servants. Friends, parents, girlfriend, in Navdeep's fair Gora is, is lost to Nam Sankitan mm -hmm. and is the emblem of compassion and the leader of Vaishnavas like Advaita Nitya Gadada and Shivas. Krishna's mood is that of the supreme enjoyer. Gora's mood is that of supreme enjoyed Shirada. Krishna adapting the mood of his beloved is an extraordinary display of Tad Bhav, taking on the innermost characteristic of another person is something that actors do all the time. However, mm. an actor's absorption in the role is temporary. A daily routine, not an identity he permanently adopts, forgetting who he really is. But Krishna is different. His absorption in Radha's emotion is his life, and it is an absorption <clears throat> So intense that his, its external symptoms of identification can frighten even his closest companions. Additionally, because Radha is his unlimited spiritual potency, Krishna never gives up plumbing the depths of her love for him. And so he identifies, he so he identifies. No. He's, so his, his identity, identity as... So his identity as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also eternal, another feature of the absolute truth. Thus, there are two forms of the Supreme Lord. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of Servitor Godhead. Krishna is complete with his consort, rather, and in two forms, they constantly meet to enjoy conjugal love. As Goranga, Krishna is complete with the mood of his concept. And in one form, he tastes the mellow separation from Krishna. Thus, Krishna manifests himself as the Supreme Lord and as his own devotee. In his, in his commentary as commentary to Jaitanya Bhagavad, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur summarizes these truths of the divine couple and Goranga. He writes, quote, in se separate forms, Radha and Krishna, the shelter of love and its object, enjoy the bliss of their union, and in so doing, reveal to the world unlimited pastime of sweetness. The combined form of Radha and Krishna, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is the shelter of fallen is the shelter of the fallen, the emblem of compassion, and the personification of service in separation. Readers may do well to note the ontological difference between Krishna and Gora, as pointed out in the verse above. Krishna is the Supreme Lord. Krishna, as the Supreme Lord, is called the Vishaya because he is the object and enjoyer of his devotee's worship. Like Srimati Radharani, a devotee of, is the ashraya, or shelter of love, the lover. Although he is Krishna, Jaita Mahaprabhu does not take the role of Vishaya. He remains the ashraya. Consequently, it is a great offense to intrude upon Lord Chaitanya's identity by attempting to impose upon him the role of Vishaya. Unfortunately, even at the time of Vrindavan Das Thakur, the first biography of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, certain sects were mistakenly worship, certain sects were mistakenly worshiping Gora as the enjoyer and not as the enjoyed. One of these sects is known as the Goranagari. Nagari, yeah. yeah. We did that ne in um, Nectar of Devotion? No, we covered that. No, in, yeah, it was uh, an, one of the, an offshoot from the Sudha Bhakti uh, Chaitanya readings. Oh, the different, the, uh, different um, 
Upper Sampadayas is a small book written by Bhaknur Thakur and the Garanga Nagaris is one of them. And they have a specific type of erroneous meditation that um, because Gaura came as Krishna and Gopis came as his Sadak also came as well. So the idea that their gross mis misunderstanding is that Gaura Krishna is enjoying with the gopis in the, in the form of you know in the form of the uh, his his associates you know but it's a gross misunderstanding yeah so there's more to it than that but that's the basics of it yeah So in other words, he was indicating that they was having a, a, a conjugal relationship. <laughs> yeah. I you remember know. slides as uh, all um, gopas, all dressed as gopis. Yeah, that's called Saki Beki. That's yeah. something else. Saki Beki is where, you know, because our goal is to be, again, in this type barber, but they take it in the wrong way. So in other words, uh, our goal of a generally go of Gaudi Vaishnav is to attain the mood of gopis. It may be otherwise, but let's just say gopis for now. So then they will dress like gopis in order to invoke the bhava of a gopi. Mm. <laughs> As if by taking on something X, yeah, by dressing like a gopi and acting like a gopi, they're trying to develop the mood of a gopi. Yeah. They're trying to think they can, they can, uh, by doing by dressing themselves externally as a gopi, then they're going to become a gopi. <laughs> That's called Saki Beki. Yeah. I wish it was that simple. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, I, I'll read the last two lines. That fin it's nearly seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on, go ahead. No more, no more need, no more need be said about them other than warning readers to avoid such fallacious worship of Tita Yeah. Okay, I'll leave it there. Yeah. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Please join us tomorrow's Bhagavad Gita, uh, Chapter 6. So please join us for that and to the end. Uh, Hare Krishna. I hope so. Try and do this. Try and meditate on this a little bit. We want to develop this mood of separation from Krishna. Yeah. Today I have um, I have a different thought. I was reading about you know when Krishna when Akura was telling Krishna um, taking Krishna away, and then uh, yeah. uh, all the gopis were running, and then Radharani runs and like comes near, and it was about emotions and oh. glances. It actually her and? glances, her sidelong glances, mm -hmm. but this glance was her eyes filled with tears and Pierce uh, Krishna's heart, yeah. Yeah, Pierce Krishna. And that's the uh, that's the glances, that's the emotion that Krishna was feeling when he was in um with all the gopi uh, um queens and things like that, you know, when he would wake, wake up crying and things like that, because he could remember that glance that really was yeah. Yeah, that struck him in his heart like a thunderbolt. Yeah, and he kept on and he kept on remembering that. In yeah. his separation, living in the great Dwarka, living in Matura. Yeah. yeah. Okay. To meditate on today. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Hare Krishna. Thank you.